Welcome back to the Series 7 podcast. This is Episode 4, and in this episode, we're going to delve into fixed income investments. This is going to be Part 1 of a multi-series group of videos that discuss fixed income investments. Let's make sure everything's working here. Okay, you can see the cursor, my cursor on the screen, so away we go. All right, there's debt and there's equity. What we're talking about here is the first video episode, which is talking about the debt side of a balance sheet. And there's certain characteristics of fixed income investments. These include a fixed principal amount, and this is called, just like in preferred stocks and common stocks, par value. But like in preferred stocks, par value is the value of the bond. Bonds are issued at par value and they mature at par value. They have a stated interest rate, except in the case of zero coupon bonds. That's the exception. But the interest rate is derived or calculated when buying a zero coupon bond. A stated maturity date, also a redemption date, a date when you can plan on getting your money back. That's how this differs significantly from an equity. An equity has no maturity date. They may have call features, but there is no maturity date when you can plan on getting your money back. So fixed income investments have a specific date, which is called the redemption date or the maturity date, where you're going to get the par value of the investment back. Not necessarily what you paid for, the bond if you bought the bond on the secondary market but the par value of the bond there's some other features that may be present in a fixed income investments these include call features and we've already discussed call features call features give the issuer the option of buying back the fixed income investment before the maturity date A sinking fund, and you quite often will see sinking funds in municipal bonds, and we'll get into the specific types of bonds in later episodes. Sinking funds are commonly seen in municipal bonds, but very rarely seen in corporate bonds and never seen in government bonds. There are some fixed income investments where they act as a mortgage. Basically, they have specific principal and interest payments that are paid over the life of the investment. And though these have specific maturity dates, you get back your principal on a monthly basis. And this can be accelerated or decelerated depending on the type of issue. There's very specific rules that govern how fast a mortgage can be paid back. And they are always in favor of the borrower. In other words, if interest rates go down and a borrower can refinance a mortgage at a lower interest rate, he has always the option to pay back the, previously, the, the previous loan, the previous Ginnie Mae or Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, and these are all specific mortgage investments prior to maturity. And this is often called duration. We'll get into these in a later episode. And then the last one is zero coupon bonds. We've briefly touched on zero coupon bonds already. They are simply bonds that don't have a fixed interest rate and don't have interest payment dates but mature at par at a specific date and you derive the interest rate based on what you pay for the bond and the time to maturity. There's several types of bond issues. We just talked about zero coupon bonds. And these are bonds that are issued with a fixed par value, usually $1,000, and a fixed maturity date. The interest rate is derived by what you're willing to pay for that bond. 
So no interest payments are made on a zero coupon bond. Instead, the bonds are bought at a discount to reflect a yield which is calculated based on the discount at which the bonds are bought. You need to make sure you understand zero coupon bonds. You use a bond calculator to calculate the yield on a zero coupon bond. You won't usually be asked to calculate the yield on a zero coupon bond because it's quite an elaborate.